One of the most spectacular stories in the entire Bible that captures the attention of both Christians and non-Christians is the narrative of the ten plagues unleashed by God upon Egypt and the incredible way in which the Hebrew people were delivered from over 400 years of slavery. The ten plagues recorded in the book of Exodus are a series of disasters that the Lord sent upon the Egyptian people. In the face of Pharaoh's refusal to let the Hebrews go, let's see what the Bible says about this episode. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. The plagues of Egypt included water turning into blood, frogs, lice, flies, livestock pestilence, boils on people's bodies, hailstorms and fire, locusts, darkness for three days, and finally, the death of the firstborns. If we continue reading until chapter 12, we will see that when Pharaoh witnessed the damage caused by the plagues to agriculture, livestock, and the Egyptian people, he would agree to release the Hebrews. However, as soon as the plagues ended, he would change his mind, and that's why the plagues continued until the tenth plague, in which his son, the heir to the throne, died along with the other firstborns. If we carefully analyze the story, we will see that the ten plagues narrate the battle between the power of the God of Israel and the false gods worshipped by the Egyptians. On one side, we have Moses and his brother Aaron, and on the other side, Pharaoh and his priests, who attempted to replicate the plagues through their scientific and mystical knowledge. Even today, many people still wonder if the ten plagues truly existed, and if there is a scientific explanation for their occurrence. The more people study the subject, the more they are amazed, and at the same time awed by the magnitude of God's power. In recent years, a wave of phenomena very similar to three of the ten plagues of Egypt has occurred worldwide, leaving many people intrigued. Are they signs from God, or just coincidences? In this video, I will show you what these episodes were, and compare them to the plagues of Egypt. Is that okay? And in the end, we will try to reach a conclusion about the message that the Lord may be trying to convey to us. But before that, I want to ask you to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to receive updates whenever I post a new video. Now let's get started. Jewish tradition teaches that all the plagues that devastated Egypt during Moses' time will appear again before the final judgment. In light of this belief of the people chosen by God, the question arises. Will the other seven disasters strike again soon? Let's see the three signs that the ten plagues may be resurfacing. The first plague, hailstorm. The Bible tells us that the seventh plague that struck Egypt was a very severe hailstorm. Let's read what is written in Exodus, chapter 9. When Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail, and lightning flashed down to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Throughout Egypt, hail struck everything in the fields, both people and animals. It beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree. And just like in those times recently, hailstorms much larger than those usually recorded by meteorologists have appeared in unexpected places. In Saudi Arabia, for example, one of the hailstones that fell from the sky was the size of a basketball. In Swaziland, near South Africa, the hail was so intense that it killed entire herds of cattle. And that's not all. A storm with winds of 116 kilometers per hour and hailstones the size of golf balls destroyed houses, cars, killed animals, and left some tourists injured in Australia. The interesting detail is that the country was experiencing one of the largest wildfires in history. The flames consumed the forests for more than four months without ceasing, not even for a single day. And in the time of Moses, God sent the hailstorm to show Pharaoh that it was he who had complete control over nature, not the god Iris, 
whom the Egyptians believed had power over the heavens, the air, and the earth. And today, what would the Lord like to say to us if these hailstorms were truly signs of his wrath? Could he be telling mankind that he alone can act on earth's climate and that human beings are disrespecting his divinity by assaulting the environment with so much pollution and deforestation? When the Lord created the heavens, the earth, and everything in it, he saw that it was good, and we have no right to destroy them. The second plague was the swarm of locusts. Immediately after the hailstorm, the Lord sent the plague of locusts to Egypt, which proceeded to destroy the remaining vegetation that had survived the previous disaster. Let's see what is written in Exodus chapter 10. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. Nothing green remained on tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. And recently, two swarms of locusts have haunted entire populations. The first of them also occurred in Saudi Arabia, where several cities were overrun by the insects. The second one occurred here in South America. In 2020, millions of locusts emerged in Paraguay, destroying numerous corn crops and migrating to Argentina, where they also caused significant damage to the people and it was very close to these insects reaching Brazil. But thanks to God, they lost strength and couldn't invade our territory. In the Old Testament, we see that God sent this plague to show the Egyptians that he had absolute control over everything that provides our sustenance, and not the false Egyptian gods, Chul and Sobek. And today, the Lord may be trying to prove to us that it's futile to idolize and set our hearts on work, money, possessions, and everything else that may guarantee our sustenance, because it is He who takes care of us and blesses us so that we never lack bread on our table. Let's see what the psalmist declared about this zeal of God. He waters the mountains from His upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of His work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. And the ninth plague, darkness. But it wasn't just any ordinary darkness. It was something so intense, so dense, that it could be felt with hands. Let's read what the Bible says next. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. And in 2007, a total solar eclipse occurred in the United States, capturing the attention of researchers worldwide. This eclipse stood out because it wasn't just an ordinary eclipse. Shortly after the eclipse, one of the most devastating hurricane seasons in the history of that country began, causing numerous deaths, injuries, and forcing millions of Americans to stay confined in their homes for days on end. In addition, influential figures and a group of scientists from the United States government presented an ambitious and controversial proposal to boost research on solar geoengineering. They proposed dimming the sun as a measure to combat global warming. Interestingly, Jesus said that just before his return, during the Great Tribulation, the sun will be darkened as a judgment for the sins of the nations. Returning to the plague of darkness that struck Egypt, the Bible states that the houses of the Israelites remained illuminated. This was to show the Egyptians that the true God of everything in the universe was the Lord, and not Ra or Amun-Ra, who were considered solar deities by the Egyptians. Today, the message that the Lord may be conveying to us through these increasingly darker and more disastrous eclipses is that He is the light of our lives. He is the one who delivers us from darkness and guides us to the light of His Holy Spirit. He is sovereign and the only God of the entire universe. Without Him, it is impossible to take a step without stumbling. That is why Jesus said, 
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The ten plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, and the liberation of the Hebrew people from Egyptian bondage point to something much greater that occurred over 1,000 years later, the death and resurrection of Christ, which freed us from the slavery of sin and secured eternal life. Just as God led his people in the time of Moses to the promised land, he also desires to guide us to the heavenly Canaan, where there will be no more weeping or pain. Therefore, we must surrender our lives to Jesus, repent of our sins, and follow him every day. And when Christ returns, we will be with him for all eternity. Amen. If you enjoyed this message, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you.